What's going on, my math party people? Anderson here, your math coach. And in this video, we are following up from a huge series of videos on polynomials. So in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is basically the, the progression from the last video. In that last video, what we did was we solved the quadratic equation, but it was already factored for us. It was already, you know, this parentheses times this parentheses equals zero. And we were, you know, we went ahead, used that zero product property and we solved. So if you haven't gone through that yet, please make sure to go through that, go through the worksheets, go through the speed drills, because now we're gonna bring everything together. We're solving a quadratic equation and it's gonna require us to know how to factor a trinomial. And on top of that, we're gonna need to know how to apply that zero product property. Those two things are coming together here. And once you know those two things and you have a good grip on it, this is gonna be pretty straightforward for you, pretty easy. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. We have x squared plus eight x plus seven equals zero. So the way that we're gonna solve quadratic equations is first noticing that there is a zero by itself on the right side. This is necessary. So before you solve, make sure that that's there. Before you solve, make sure that you have a zero on the right side. Because once you have the zero, now it's time to go ahead and apply your knowledge of factoring that trinomial so that way you can factor it, getting in those parentheses, then we can apply that zero product property. So again, if you haven't gone through those videos, get your butt back there and go ahead and watch those. But let's go ahead and do this here. Remember, when it comes to factoring trinomials, here's what we do. Well, in this case, we only have a one in front of the x squared. So we can use that simple method, right? Find the factors of C that add up to B. So if I check this out over here, check out that seven. Well, the factors of seven are simply going to be, well, one times seven. That's it. And so when we ask ourselves, well, what is going to be in those parentheses? Well, remember, it's the factors of C that add up to B. Seven is C because it goes AX squared plus BX plus C. So the factors of C, the seven, that add up to eight. Well, given that they're both positive, they're both going to be positive. One plus seven is eight. One times seven is seven. Boom. There we go. That's enough. That works. And so we can split this up into x plus 1 and x plus 7. That's the factored form now. And remember, in the previous video, this is what we worked off of, right? Because now we can apply that zero product property. Remember that the zero product property pretty much states, ZPP right here, the zero product property pretty much states that, hey, look, we're going to go ahead and take each of these factors and set them equal to zero. Because remember, if you have this whole thing times this whole thing being zero, well, you know that the only way to get zero as a product is if you're multiplying by zero. So either this is zero or that is zero or they're both zero. But what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what makes them zero. So we know what X values are the right ones. So I'm going to go ahead and set X plus one equal to zero right there. And then I'll set X plus seven equal to zero. Just like that. Just like that. And so now what we're going to do my math party people is, well, just solve. Subtract one on both sides here to give us x equals negative one. Booyah. And then we also have over here, if we subtract seven on both sides, we give ourselves, bam, right there, x equals negative seven. So these are our answers. x equals negative one and x equals negative seven. Both of those values work for x. And boom, that would make our answer a. Now, if you don't believe me, don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and check my work. And this is something you can always do. You can check your work by going ahead and plugging in those values. So let's say I want to plug in x equals negative 1 to check my work. Well, here's the equation. So I have myself negative 1 squared plus 8 times negative 1 plus 7 equals 0. Will that be true? Let me zoom in over here. Let's find out. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. And then we have the seven. Okay, one minus eight is negative seven. Negative seven plus seven is that zero? That is correct, that is zero. So look at that, it does absolutely work. Now let's go ahead and check our work with the negative seven right over there. Let's check our work here. So checking it again, x equals negative seven. If you wanted to plug it in, you would have negative seven squared plus eight times negative seven plus seven equals zero. Here we go. 
Negative 7 squared is positive 49. 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. Okay, so what do we have now? Well, we can go ahead and combine these two first because 49 plus 7 is 56. And so now we have 56 minus 56. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely, my math party people. You can check your work by plugging the numbers back in just like regular equations. Just like regular equations. So here we go. Now that you know how to check your work, I'm not going to check my work anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and solve these and we are good. Now, take a look at this one over here. We have m squared plus 5m equals 0. This is another very important one simply because in this one, you're not going to be using that traditional method of factoring. You can actually go ahead and just use the greatest common factor. Watch this. Notice how we already have that 0 on the right side as needed, right? It's already there, so we know what we can do. So we have m squared plus 5m equals 0. Now notice this. Notice that we don't have a c term. You know how it's ax squared plus bx plus c? We don't have a regular number just lying around for us to be able to factor. So what we're supposed to do in this case, when you see that, is just factor out the greatest common factor. We have m squared and we have 5m. What do they share? They share m, right? They both have an m, and so I can factor an m out. Watch this. So I can turn this right here into m multiplied by m plus 5. Again, what I have done here is I factored out the m. And before we continue, my math party people, really quick before we continue, I know that you're enjoying this video, and I want to make sure that more people can enjoy these videos just like you. So if you wouldn't mind, just take a quick second, like this video, comment on it, just showing some appreciation, showing what you learned, and then make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that way when we come out with new videos, typically every day, you can be right there on the spot to catch on to them. So help us help others ace the ASVAB. I'm Anderson. Let's keep going here. So now what you see is you have this here multiplied by this here, and that equals zero. So either m equals zero or m plus five equals zero. Either one. But we're going to solve for both to show both numbers that work perfectly, perfectly well. So look, if I set this equal to zero, well, we have nothing to do m just equals zero, we're done. And if you notice, if you plug it back in, zero squared is zero, plus five times zero is zero, zero equals zero, that works, you're good. And now if you have in purple over here, m plus five equals zero, check this out my math party people. I'll subtract five from both sides, booyah, that cancels and we have m equals negative five. Now in this case, I know I said I wasn't gonna check my work, but I will in this one because it's a different type of problem, but you can plug in negative five and you'll see that it works. Because if you have negative 5 squared plus 5 times 5, or excuse me, negative 5, will that work? Well, negative 5 squared is positive 25. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And that ends up working. Boom, right there. Nice and easy. So those are your answers. D is correct. And we can keep moving forward. Let's keep looking at more examples, my party people. Uh, let me go ahead and look for some tougher ones here. Because I do want to make sure... That the ones we look at, there we go, I like this one, number eight. So, looking at number eight, what we see is again, we have zero on the right side, so we're good to go. So what I'm going to start off with is by factoring the b squared plus 2b minus 24 equals zero. I'm going to factor it. So my question is this, my math party people. Hey, what are the factors of negative 24 that add up to a positive 2? Let's go ahead and get that done. We have negative 24. And remember, you want to use your skills for factoring. You know that you have a negative 24 as the C. Remember, you're looking for the factors of C that add up to B. So remember, when you're finding the factors of a negative number, one of the numbers is going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Because you can't have two positives multiplying to a negative, and you can't have two negatives multiplying to a negative. That doesn't work. Two positives multiplied as a positive, two negatives multiplied as multiplied together is a positive. So they have to be opposite signs. And you're going to ask yourself, well, which one is going to be the positive? Which one's going to be the negative? Remember, they have to add up to B. They have to add up to B, which means, hey, B is a positive number. If you have a positive number and a negative number being added, and the results are positive, well, the bigger number has to be positive. The bigger number has to be positive. I teach this for a long time here, a long minute here in the courses. So go ahead and go back to factoring trinomials if you're having trouble with this part right here. Let's get it done. The factors of negative 24 
or one times 24. Again, the bigger number has to be positive. So it would have been negative one times 24, but that doesn't work. They don't have a difference of two. You're looking for a difference of two. Negative two times 12, that doesn't work. Negative three times eight, that doesn't work. Negative four times six, that works. Because a positive six plus a negative four or six minus four equals positive two. And negative four times six is that negative 24. So we are good, we absolutely are. And so with that, my math quarter people, here we go. We got ourselves over here, b minus four, b plus six, and that's gonna equal zero. Now we can apply that zero product property and we're good. Here we go. We can say that b minus four equals zero and b plus six equals zero. And so up next, what we'll do is we'll add four to both sides here and we have b equals positive four. Over here, subtract six on both sides and we have b equals negative six. And so there it is, my math quarter people. Booyah, we're good. We have b equals four and b equals negative six. Those are our answers, and that will be B as the correct answer. Up next, we got another one coming up here, my party people. Let's go ahead and try number 10 out. Number 10, I noticed immediately that we have that zero on the right side. We're feeling pretty good. But what I also noticed is that I don't have that C term. How do I find the factors of C that add up to B if C is not even there? So what I can do is I'll go ahead and actually use the greatest common factor. What do N squared and 9N have in common? They have their n in common. So I can go ahead and factor out the n. And on the inside, well, n squared divided by n is n. 9n divided by n is just a 9. So now we can apply the zero product property. We have that right there and that right there. So we can set n equal to zero. And we can set 9 minus n equal to zero. And so if you're familiar with solving equations, like this is going to be the easiest thing in the world because you will add 9 to both sides and we are good. N equals nine. Booyah, booyah, and we're feeling pretty good. And so we have zero and positive nine. There it is right there, and we're set to keep moving forward. So I'm gonna do a couple more of my math party people, a couple more here. Let's say we have x squared minus nine x plus 20. Let's try this one out. So here, immediately I see that we have only a one right there in front of the x squared, which is good. I don't have to do the AC method. And then from here, okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead now and well, I see that there's a zero on the right side. So I'm good to start factoring, I'm good, I'm good. So my question is now, what are the factors of 20 that add to a negative nine? Well, if I'm adding to a negative nine, but I multiply to a positive 20, what that tells me is this. If I multiply to a positive, both numbers have to be positive or both numbers have to be negative. You can't have opposite signs. They're either both positive or both negative. And because they have to add to a negative nine, that tells me that they are both negative. A positive plus a positive is a positive. A negative plus a negative is a negative. So with that, they're both gonna be negative and they have to add up to nine, negative nine. So negative one times negative 20, that doesn't work. Negative two times negative 10 doesn't work. Negative four times negative five, that does work. Because four times five is 20 and four plus five is nine. So a negative four plus a negative five is a negative nine. And there we have it. And really quick before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons. You're gonna get access to guided practice just like this. Worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online. And lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way when you take the test, there's no test anxiety. There's no pressure because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more. So take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. So we'll go ahead and apply that zero, or apply the factor, x minus four times x minus five, that equals zero. And now what we'll go ahead and do is, hey, let's go ahead now and zero product property time, ZPP. ZPP, and we'll go ahead here and have x minus four set that equal to zero x minus five, set that equal to zero. 
and we're good to go. We'll add four on both sides here, and we'll have x equals four. Add five to both sides here. Wow, I'm really going fast, but there it is, and we have x equals five. And so there we are, my math party people. Booyah, x equals four, x equals five, and that is choice B. So there it is. There it is, man. Um, so we're about 15 minutes in here, but let's go ahead. You know, we can try one more if we'd like to. M squared plus 8M plus 12 equals 0. This will be the last one, unless there are some ridiculous ones out here that i got to find. Yeah, these are all, these are all pretty much going to be the same, man. These are all pretty much wrapping around the same idea. So I'll go ahead and just do number 44 and we'll wrap it up. So here we go. We'll have X squared plus 12X plus 32 equals 0. So we already have the zero on the right side by itself, so we're good. Now we just factor zero product property and solve. Here we go. So I gotta find the factors of 32 that add up to positive 12. So because I know that they multiply to a positive and they add to a positive, both numbers are gonna be positive. So here, 32 is one times 32. Again, I'm looking for the pair that adds up to 12. So here, two times 16, Three doesn't work. We can do four times eight. And then we also, and that's it. And I immediately noticed four plus eight is equal to 12. That'll work right there. So we have ourselves right over here. X plus four, X plus eight. And if you look at it, if you know that you're gonna be setting it equal to zero, you can tell that the X plus four equals zero, that's gonna be negative four. And the X plus eight, that's gonna be negative eight. You have to ask yourself, you know, what's going to make it zero? What X value makes it zero? And you can tell that right here, negative four, negative eight, and you can be done. But I'll go ahead and do the work for us. I know that we want to see it. Subtract four, X equals negative four. Here, X plus eight equals zero. Subtract eight on both sides. X equals negative eight. And there it is. Booyah, booyah, all done. And we do our little dance. And so there it is, my math party people x equals negative 4 and negative 8. And that is answer choice D. And there you have it. I really do hope you're starting to enjoy math a lot more than you did before, simply because my math portal people, what this has always been about, it's about really enabling you to have the power to increase the score on the test that you're about to take or any class that you're taking. I want to make sure that you feel empowered. And so this is one of the more complicated topics if you're looking at the beginning algebra courses. And so, hey, if you're feeling pretty good about this, Shout it out, man. I'm happy that you are really feeling good about it. So with that said, keep moving forward. What you will see in the course or program is that we have up next our worksheets, just like this for you to practice. Take your time, but then go into those speed drills and see how fast and how quickly you can get this done. With that said, my math party people, again, I'm Coach Anderson. I'll see you in the next video, and let's keep raising our scores. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there. And you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you want to raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.